The following content is not the fruit of my own research, but rather that of the good people of the RuneScape Wiki. All credit is given to them for the written information. Welcome to this episode of Lorescape. As always, the content within this video will be more so vocal than visual, so feel free to leave this video running as you do chores around the house, or even as you skill within the game or do something else. There will be some graphical supports, images, GIFs maybe, and also other links to other videos if you are confused about a certain lore figure. But other than that, there's not going to be much going on on screen. This week's episode will take place about a particular character, but before we get into that, first let's take a look at the screen that is currently on. You can see here the list of the Majorats themselves. The Zerusians are on the left. The Zamoricans are on the right, and the only neutral Majorat is in the middle, at the bottom. If you wish to see any of their histories, feel free to follow the link that will lead to their video once they are up. For now, we will go with Lucian in this video. Lucian definitely was one of the cruelest figures to ever walk Gielinor. He was a powerful Majorat with the aspirations to attain godhood himself. He cares little about his allies, disregarding them whenever they have fulfilled their role, and his focus on his rise to power made him extremely careless, which would eventually come back to him. On top of this, he is also very prideful in himself and his own abilities, which he trusts above any kind of support, even from his own kind. His power is not unlike his pride, as he is able to do quite a lot of things with much ease. He is capable of summoning undead armies, large enough to besiege cities on his own, and he has also been rumored to have the capacity to conceal divine artifacts through his magic and even assume control over them, attuning them to his sole use. He can also read minds and control them to an extent, and he is very cunning and intelligent unlike other Majorats such as Khazard. He is just as learned in ancient lore, especially about elder artifacts. He has lived for over 6,000 years ever since his arrival from Feneske. One of his abilities allow him to enter a state of healing that will repair all but the most severe wounds. He, much like his fellow Majorat, can shapeshift at will, and the shape he prefers most is that of an intimidating lich. When empowered by an artifact, he can summon a considerable amount of beasts without even showing any exhaustion. His trademark spell is extremely strong and he can easily deflect any assault upon himself. On top of that, he is able to bind demons to a perpetual state of simultaneous torment and healing, something once considered impossible. Finally, Lucien also has experience with it, the Shadow Realm, using it to conceal the Stone of Jazz in his eventual plans. Like the other Majorat, Lucien lived on Freneske, the realm of perpetual warfare, along with many other tribes. Here, they would live to survive the elements and the destructive power of the legendary Mother Ma, an elder god that created their race and whom they would prevent from wreaking havoc on Freneske through the rituals of rejuvenation and innervation, although at least one Majorat regarded her as a mere myth. Due to the constant conflict with neighboring tribes, such as the Masera, as well as the frequent sacrifices of the rituals, the Majorat tribe never counted more than a few hundred members and was ruled kratocratically, basically by whoever was the strongest. In the second age of Gilinor, two demigods, Iklarin and Amaskut, traveled to Freneske in order to recruit the Majorat to fight the Zerosian invaders of their homeland, the Kerijan Empire, in the Kerijan Zerosian War. Some Majorat opposed the proposal, while others agreed to go, causing a large battle to break out. Both Azanadra and Demekel argued that the Majorat should go with Iklarin, and Karshai was one of the most excited at the prospect of leaving Freneske 
as Gelinor is a much kinder realm than it was. Eventually, after the death of Salisard and the sacrifice of Abrogol, those in favor of traveling to Gelinor emerged victoriously and the entire Majorat tribe accompanied the two gods to Gelinor. There, Lucian aided the Menaphite warriors in driving back the Zerusian army with success. During this time, they were known as the stern judges of Iclarin. However, as the Menaphites had almost ensured their victory a couple of years later, the Majorat Sliske, who had got into a feud with Iclarin over his methods in battle, approached the Zerusian legate, a Chthonian demon named Duke Ceres, and made arrangements to desert the Menaphites and join Zeros. Most of the Majorat convened at the fortress of Karideh, and soon emerged, joining arms with the Zerusian, proceeding to slaughter the remaining Menaphite armies. The god Tumekan, father of Iftlarin and Amaskut, swiftly interfered by sacrificing himself, his armies and half of his empire to repel the Zerosian. He used his powers to fire to create a massive explosion, turning half of the empire into a desert wasteland, as well as obliterating his own army and most of the Zerosian won. Of the approximately 500 Majorat present, less than a fifth survived the explosion thanks to Azanadra, who quickly erected a magical barrier as protection. Lucian was amongst those to survive and joined the remainder of the Zerosian army on to march to foreign tree. He was given the rank of Tribune in the army of Zeros. Amongst the Majorat's substantial numbers was Zamorak, a warlord that proved his strength on the battlefield countless times. He soon rose to the position of general, making him one of the most influential individuals in Zeros' army. Yet, despite his favor with the god, Zamorak had long silently plotted against the empty lord, Zeros, and had already gained a considerable following. Amongst his followers was Lucian, a Majorat who craved power and ancient knowledge above all else. Through a long series of events, the staff of Armadil fell into Zamorak's hands. Believing a god weapon could have the strength to overthrow Zeros, he led an army to his fortress and assailed it. Using Perjur's duplicate journal to hide his thoughts from Zeros, he and his followers approached his castle under the pretense of discussing war plans. Zemorak attacked Zeros in his own chamber, while his allies such as Lord Draken and his relative, Tamaron, Enakra, Zemurigal, Hazil and Vigora fought his bodyguards outside. If Lucian had not been otherwise preoccupied, he would most likely have fought alongside the rebels. Fortunately for the rebels, this was not necessary, seeing that the Saradominist mage Dalak had, upon hearing about Zamorak's possession of the staff from Lenissa, placed an enchantment upon the staff that would make it undetectable by Zeros himself. Through pure luck, Zamorak impaled the Empty Lord and stole his godly powers. Lucien, his blood flowing with powerful magics from the attack, was unaffected. It seems that he was the one who discovered the Saradominist spy Lenissa though he knew she would come in useful at another time. At that point, the gods banished Zamorak for slaying one of their own. Lucien was amongst those that went into hiding afterwards, in order to ensure his survival. Zamorak's banishment did not last, and soon he returned and rallied behind him an army with which he would conquer the world of Gelinor. Many other gods had also gained power during this time and soon a series of wars would have engulfed the world for thousands of years. Lucien returned to Zamorak's side, using his necromancy abilities to assist his lord. As few documents survive the wars, little is known of Lucien's exact role during that time. However, when Gyotis awoke and ended the wars, Lucien began to operate silently, secretly working to aid Zamorak in his return to power. It is revealed later on during the quest while Gyotex sleeps that Lucien view himself as the successor of Zamorak and he is willing to betray the god of chaos in order to attain control over the Majora. Not much is known about Lucien's actions in the time after the god wars. Towards the end of the fourth age, he became father to a half-Majorat half-human named Moya. 
Moya's mother was a human, but after her death, Moya was left with her father. Lucien refers to Moya as a failed experiment due to her being half human, and as such an improper majorat, lacking abilities that true majorat have. Despite this, she remained loyal to her father, and he kept her to work for him as an assassin and spy. Shortly after the 17th ritual of rejuvenation, Lucien was informed by his daughter that somebody tried to move the ritual marker, which is very important to the Majora as a whole. After a discussion with Zemurigal, he deduced that only a Majora would try to take the stone, and he, after checking which Majora was absent from the ritual, sent Moya to go and find Dilraj. Lucien heard little from Moya for almost 500 years, and in the year 168 of the Fifth Age, Moya, now an old woman, informed Lucien that she had found in Peninsula, dubbed Daimonheim, a year later, with a large dungeon complex, ruled over by someone called Bill. Moya suspected that Bill Rack was this Bill, and ventured into the bottom of the complex to prove so to her master, where she found the missing ritual marker, warped and corrupted by the nature of the floor and Bill Rack. However, at this point, he seemed to have completely lost sanity, and she told Lucien that she found him, and Lucien asked her to either try to kill him, or bring him to be used as sacrifice for the upcoming 18th ritual. Moya, whether by her own choice or not, joined Billratch's cause, and Lucien did not hear any more from her. For 2000 years, Lucien would remain relatively quiet, and that is not following the previous events, this includes the previous events, forgotten by most save the Guardians of Armadil. However, he was far from finished. During the Fifth Age, a magical and powerful artifact that is now known as the Shield of Arav, which allowed its bearer great power over all races, was broken in half by a feud by two gangs. You might recognize these events as taking place during the quest Shield of Arav. Lucien started amassing an undead army, and he wished to acquire the shield. In the year 154 of the Fifth Age, Lucien used his army to lead a massive assault on the city of Ferrak, the home of the shield. Assisted by powerful mages such as Solos de la Gar, Lucien's army seemed unstoppable. But Ferrak, even without the shield, was still supplied with runes and was able to defeat Lucien's army easily. In fact, he was defeated so quickly that the majority of the population never even knew his name, and only few, most prominently the Temple Knights, ever fully understood the attack. After the incident, Lucien fled back to the shadows, although this was merely the beginning of his search for more powerful artifacts, especially Elder artifacts. The following takes place during the quest Temple of Ikov. In the year 169 of the Fifth Age, Lucien enlisted the assistance of an adventurer. At the time, he was assuming the, the form of an incredibly frail man who covered his face with a hood. Not telling the adventurer who he was, he asked them to retrieve an ancient artifact known as the Staff of Armadale from a temple north of East Ardoin. The adventurer took one of two routes. You either have the choice to take the staff from the Guardians of Armadale and deliver it to Lucian, or you could attempt to kill him, but the attack failed, causing him to teleport after only a single bit of damage. Either way, Lucian recruited a mage known as Movario, and he was able to acquire the staff, so it doesn't really matter in the end, he managed to get his hands on this Elder Artifact. After his successful theft of the staff, Lucien once again enlisted the help of Movario and Darv much later. During Defender of Varrock, the quest within the game, in early 169 of the Fifth Age, Lucien attempted to establish an alliance with the necromancer Majorat Zemurigal, who was also his cousin. Sharat Trirk, the later Gorgoral ambassador, revealed that Lucien was also in search of an unknown artifact, the Stone of Jazz itself, and that an alliance would be beneficial to both. Zemurigal dismissed the stone as non-existent and a fairy tale, and decided to simply continue with his attack on Verak, 
thus rejecting the proposal. Lucien, in his pride, was not used to being refused and it, it evoked a form of anger towards the Morrigal that would continue on until a certain disaster much later on. The following takes place during the quest while Guttek sleeps. Soon, Lucien shed his frail form and reveals himself to be a very powerful Majorat capable of raising the undead. While sending Maverio around the world to seek the stone, he also established a waterproof spy network himself that allowed him to be informed of everything that happened in important locations. A group of disguised spies were placed in Draenor village, and Lucien hired lots of mercenaries as well. Finally, he also made a deal with Lord Aquarius and whoever the leader of the Dark Warriors fortress was at the time, securing the aid of the Kinshra and Dark Warriors. In the catacombs of the Kinshra, many dozens of elite Kinshra soldiers, warriors, mages and archers were trained. They were overseen by another of Lucian's associates, a mysterious wizard by the name of Dark Squall. Inevitably, Lucian's schemes leaked out and the underground druid organization Crooks Equal got ear of his spies and his ambitions to rule Gilenor. Crooks Equal immediately took action. He told a certain man who was Grand Vizier of the Legends Guild that they needed superb adventurers and a mission to Karamja. This was a smart move because when this adventurer accepted the job, of course it was the player character, they were told the real story by the leader Tyrisk Semphir and they were immediately attacked by two assassins of Lucian. They were defeated, but afterward the adventurer was sent to find Movarius Bays where they found his notes and learned of his mission. They were then asked to make contact with the guardians of Ad Armadil, especially with their leader, Idria. And at the guardian's base, the adventurer witnessed a surprise attack by Lucian's mercenaries who slaughtered the guardians. The adventurer managed to defeat them, and the surviving guardians redirected them to Idria, who was hiding in the forester's arms in, in Sears village. Crooks Equal and Idria subsequently moved to Fador along with the Temple Knights, where Certification allowed them to use the White Knight's castle as a base of operation. An alliance was formed between Cruxicol, Tyrisk being the representative, the Guardians of Armadil, represented by Idria, and the Temple Knights, represented by the priest, Akrizae Colium. The alliance's sole goal began to be known as the Extermination of Lucian. The Alliance recruited a band of eight extremely powerful heroes to apprehend the Majorat. Haralak Mineros, Overseer of the Warriors Guild, Sloane, Master of Strength, Gamal, Tall Doorman of the same guild, the three Slayer Masters, Chirael, Mazjna, and Jiradel, Sirigus, a combat addicted adventurer, and finally, Hazelmir the Ethereal, a legendary and extremely powerful gnome. The adventurer was also sent to rescue Ekrize's assistant Silif, who had been captured by Dark Squall while infiltrating the catacombs after one of Lucian's spies, captured by the adventurer, had revealed his leader to be the Squall under the influence of a truth serum. After freeing him from jail, the adventurer also discovered the true identity of Dark Squall, and it was none other than Surak Magis, the leader of the Dragon High. They quickly planted a teleorb into Sorak's pocket and teleported to Falador before they could be harmed. The adventurer then disguised themselves as Sorak and they switched with the Dragon High leader. And at that point, they infiltrated Lucian's camp to the south of the ritual site, where they witnessed his display of power. Using an ancient spell, Lucian summoned a dozen of undead heroes to fill his army. The adventurer's identity was then compromised, as Lucian is very cunning and he noticed immediately that he was not Shirok, and he attempted to kill the adventurer by firing an immensely empowered spell. The spell was evaded, and instead two elite Kinshra knights were killed. At that point, the group of heroes that the Alliance had summoned to their aid arrived and they took the fight to Lucian. 
Maskna and Haralak took on the undead, while Jiradale and Sloane approached the Majora. Before they could even think of hitting him, Lucien killed him with no effort whatsoever. Hazelmil charged a very powerful attack, sending a barrage of crystals at Lucien. But where almost any other opponent would have succumbed, the crystal simply bounced off him and did nothing at all. Sirius and Turiel each attacked Lucien, but before they could touch him once again, the weapons broke on his force field, and then Gummel joined them, and Lucien fired yet another spell, obliterating the three warriors before reducing the ancient gnome to ashes as well. Enjoying the sight of his destruction, Lucien then took his undead soldiers and teleported away, leaving Machna and Haralak the sole survivors. The Alliance proceeded to send the adventurer to the Tears of Gutex cavern, where Moverio had been doing research. It is where the Stone of Joss was hidden, and it is also where Moverio led his research for uh, Lucien himself. Lucien himself as well teleported in the cavern once the adventurer had made considerable progress and found the, st the Stone of Joss. He revealed that he intended to use the stone to undermine Zamorak's authority and raise himself as the leader of the Majora. He remarked that he would uh, use the stone of Jas' ability to regulate life forces in order to enslave the kingdoms of Gilinor and re-establish Majorat authority in the realm. He teleported away with the stone of Jas, even though Movario warned him that his research on the artifact was, was not yet complete and cast a special spell which summoned two powerful tormented demons to finish off the adventurer. With the help of Idra and the power boost from the stone previously acquired, the adventurer managed to slay the demons, and Movario then secretly left Lucian's service out of repulsion of how he treated such an ancient artifact. Lucian however had won, now owning two Elder artifacts. Meanwhile, the slaying of the Balance Elemental which guarded the Stone of Jess, and the abuse of the stone released the Dragon Kin, defenders of the stone, and enslaved to do so by Jess from their castle, and they began to hunt for Lucien, the false user, as was their duty. The following takes place during Ritual of the Majora. Still in 169, Lucien participated in the 18th Majora Ritual of Rejuvenation. When the adventurer was sent by Cruxequal to teleport the stone to Falador, they accidentally touched it, triggering Lucien's alarm to teleport them out. They met with certification on the surface and they, along with Ali the Wise, a battalion of Temple Knights and a Crusade, arrived at the ritual site near Garok. They were ambushed by General Khazard, who revealed Ali to be the Zerosian Majorat Wahisiatel. After Khazard's defeat, but not death, the group marched to the ritual marker where Lucien appeared and began to mock and attack the group. As Tiffy called Idria with reinforcements, Lucien summoned four enhanced ice titans to kill the group while dueling with Wahisitil himself. He had also planned to summon an army of ice monsters called Glacors, but these had been killed by Kiradal, vindictive daughter of Duradel, whom Lucien has slain. After the titan's defeat, Lucien became angrier and summoned about 20 ice demons, ordering them to destroy the Azid adversaries. Sliske then arrived and with lots of efforts with the help of Sliske's whites, the Barrow's brothers, the demons were defeated. More Majorat began to arrive to the site. Enakra was one of them and demanded a vote to the choice for a sacrifice but Lucien contradicted her, stating that the most powerful gets to choose a sacrifice. Actanakos arrived followed by Zemurigal, who attempted to convince his cousin to sacrifice a Zerusian. Azanadra, Khazard and Azil finally arrived to the scene, although Azil's presence may be prevented if his rise was prevented in the quest The Cult of Azil, and the Majorat then argued, and Lucien angrily silenced his kin, shouting that they were all weak before revealing he had already decided whom to sacrifice. He pulled up Jalan from the quest tell of the Mospa in his frozen state out from under the ground, declaring that he will be the sacrifice, because he was the weakest of all Majorat still alive, 
and because of his attempt to rejuvenate himself without participating in the ritual by hiding in those same caves. Wahi Sietel rejected this and attacked Lucien insisting that he be the sacrifice due to the threat he posed, which caused a fight between the Zerosian and the Zamorican Majorat to erupt. Zemurical called his gargoyle with zombies but they were swiftly defeated by Sliski's foes. He then summoned the Rav, but the adventurer freed him from Zemurigal's curse using his heart and then a Rav went berserk and sent Flurry after Flurry of attacks at Zemurigal was clearly not able to withstand the attacks of both a Rav and Anazanadra and thus he begged his cousin for help. Lucien remembered about Zemurigal's refusal from way earlier in the year and he refused to help him. He was more so focused on his own problems which prompted Zemurigal to turn on him and convince the rest of the Majorat to do the same. All the Majorat then began to attack Lucian but he managed to hold them all off until the time for the ritual arrived. Lucian then ceased battle and obliterated Jalan at this moment, rejuvenating all Majorat. After being returned to full power, Azanadra used several beacons he'd positioned previously to summon Zaros' power and deal two devastating blows to Lucian, which prompted him to bring out the Stone of Jazz. He proclaimed his status as God and prepared to exterminate all Zerusian. But when Lucian tried to use the stone, he accidentally summoned the Dragon King Guardians, who demanded that he release the stone. Since he had never let Movario finish his research, he could not have known that this happened. And this is why his pride came back to him. However, Lucien defied the Dragon Kin and a fight between them broke. At first he seemed to be winning when he knocked out the first opponent to attack, Sitaf, to the floor with the Staff of Armadil. As he prepared to impale the Dragon Kin, however, Strizat, the second Dragon Kin, pulled him away, forcing Lucien to drop the staff before also being pulled to the ground by Lucien's massive strength in the latter's retaliation. His seeming victory did not last, however, as he looked down on the dragon kins. Sakurt, a third dragon kin who had not been seen before, sneaked up from behind Lucien, took hold of the staff and hit him over the head, shattering the orb in the process and knocking him down to the ground. Before he could do anything, Sakurt impaled Lucien in his chest with the shaft of the staff, and with a loud cry of agony, Lucien died. The Dragon King then made a warning to the others and revealed their intention of destroying the cities before flying off with the staff itself. After his death, Lucien's body was left lying on the ground, and he was not mourned by a single one of his former Majorat allies. Not even by Zimurigal, who merely stated, good riddance. And thus came to an end the life of Lucien de Majorat. From his early life, from Freneske, to the thousands of lifetime he had on Gelenor, it ended by his own pride blinding him to the nature of the Stone of Jazz. I hope you've enjoyed the tale of this special Majorat. There will be more in the future, and next time we will see about the existence of another one of the Majorats, which one it has not been decided yet. The next one may be a Zerosian to bring about another viewpoint of the race, because not all Majorats are as cunning and as powerful and power hungry as Lucian was. For now, I will merely bid you adieu, and I wish you a good day.